time is now 6.36 on March 4th, 2024. Um, for those that are attending tonight's meeting, you should be aware that the meeting is being audio and video recorded by APAC and ASRSD. Any audience members who wish to record any parts of the meeting must inform the chairperson who will announce the recording. This is to comply with the Massachusetts wiretap statute. The listings of matters are those responsibly and anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. I will now call to order the regular session. Let us start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Can we have roll call, please? I'm here. 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 Okay, now we have our student showcase. from all grades who've been working since the end of December. Uh, they're gonna perform for you the finale of our show. Um, if it sounds familiar, it's because it is based on a very popular young adult novel series by Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson, um, and I don't even know how many books there are at this point. But this tells the story of the first book, which follows Percy Jackson, played by Kazai Salter, um, who after a troubled school experience, uh, discovers that he is a half-blood, which means that he has one mortal parent and one godly parent, who he later learns is Poseidon, the god of the sea. And that takes Percy on a wild adventure that spans the length of our show. And at the end of the show, Percy realizes that the problems are only just getting started, and he needs to make a choice. And that is what uh, he's talking about here in this song, backed up by our whole cast, uh, who are also campers at Camp Castle. Um, <laughs> our production is music directed by Michael Powderly, yeah, who's yeah. going to be running our sounds tonight. Um, I think it should be fun, but if our sound is really off balance, we might pause and start again. Um, so, without further ado, here's Bring On The Monsters from The Lightning Seed. Yeah. 
please, please feel free to come and support them and all their hard work. Um, does anybody have any questions for any of our performers? Oh, you guys were great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great yeah. special yeah. that you're here. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Always one of my favorite parts. Um, we can go home now. I know, right? <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going to move to public comment. Okay. Public comment, yes. Do we have anybody online, uh, Michelle? No. Just All right. Do we have anyone in the room for public comment? No. Okay. <clears throat> one, two, three. All right. Okay, I'm going to move on to our consent agenda. Um, so this is going to be the consent agenda vote for our February. Ooh, what did I miss? Oh, sorry, girls. See, I kept have our looking and I kept wondering. I was like, I knew we had our our representatives. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry because you know I love that you guys come, and I was about to just throw you in after the consent agenda. <laughs> so um, now we have our high school representatives. So I'm going to let you guys take it away. Um, so we're just going to talk about what we've been up to. Um, for me, I'm still waiting on my decisions. Um, I have eight left to receive. Um, so it's just a waiting game at this point. My friends are already back, so I'm getting a little antsy. But yeah, we'll see where everything goes with that. Um, I just had my first three college tours during February break. And so I toured University of Maryland, Howard University, and Hampton University. And I really liked all of them, but my top school is definitely Howard right now, and I can't wait to look at more schools. Um, I've been trying to work a lot. Um, I'm in the middle of winter season and spring season, so I've been trying to get as many hours. I work at Pleasant Cafe, and I see Mr. President there. Um, and um, I also work at the Millworks, and I do a soccer clinic with little kids, so I've just been trying to make as much as I can for college and summer and stuff like that. And then we're both starting softball season soon, so I'm really excited for that personally. I think yes. Deb's really excited too. Very excited. We've been having uh, captain practices, and the first one we had five people, but this weekend we had like 20. It was awesome, and it was great practice, and we're both really looking forward to that. So, yeah, that's what we've been up to. Are there any questions or anything? Okay, you know so when your first game is, so we can try to make it? Ooh. I, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. It's I'll okay. let you know. Definitely. I just thought maybe you had in the back. Beginning of April, for sure. Beginning of April. It comes <laughs> fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so take me back. So you're waiting. Are you anxious? Yes. What? Where? <laughs> okay. So where is your ang where's your anxiousness lie? Um, well, softball is also like coming into play, so I'm waiting to hear back from Wellesley. And if I get in, I have a spot on the softball team. So wow. I'm trying to figure out, like, what I want to prioritize if I want to play, if I don't, and also just if I get into other schools that are also really high up on like, my list. So then I have to make that decision, like what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. So I'm anxious about hearing back and actually having to like pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I learned really late in life that I'm mm -hmm. gonna suggest you do is go with the what if, but when you do what if, don't come at it with anxiety, come at it with what's the worst case scenario, start there. Because honestly, if you can get over the fear and the anxiety of what you consider to be the worst situation, by the time it comes around, you're already gonna have the plan off the top of your head. And then that way you can enjoy yourself. Um, I feel like it's one of those odd times where it's very bittersweet, where it's, they'll say, oh, it's high school's the best. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but most people, <laughs> most people say that. So at least that way you get to enjoy um, the accomplishments that you have. Um, but, but definitely do that. Remember, I think, who you are, because sometimes we forget that and we forget to look at our accomplishments and then all of a sudden, boom, it's like the day of graduation and you kind of are overwhelmed with your feelings and can't be present. So start enjoying it now and recognize your accomplishments now, because you do have them. Um, and anchor yourself, because there's a lot of new stuff coming at you and I'd really love for you to enjoy yourself, especially where you're excited about softball, so even if you start there. But don't let that suck your joy out because ultimately you're a rock star anyway. 
So you just keep moving forward with that. And Nia, be on the lookout um, at Mohegan Sun every year, and I feel like it's around March or April, all the HBCUs go up to Mohegan Sun and they play um, a game, they play for a championship um, that uh, Chris Paul put together. Um, and they have a little inner cup challenge and it's pretty awesome. It's a three, three day weekend um, that you can go down and see them. So look at it and they do the recruiting and they have some more information. So if you want to travel and see some more of those schools, you'd be able to kind of do like a one-stop shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anybody else? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, unfortunately, I've had the, uh, I'll give you the advice I've had to give three times in four years. <laughs> so I sat down with, with my kids as they're growing up. As we looked at all the universities and all the majors and the rest of that, for what you apply to, you can't make a bad choice. It's not possible to do that. Mm -hmm. It's also not possible to know what the right fit is for you 100%. The only thing that you're committing to is your first semester at your first school. That's all you're doing, and in that major. And the only thing that's really important as you go to that first semester at your first school and your first major is that you kill it. You know, you both have proven you have the ability to do well at things you like and even do well at things you don't like. So when you go to your first semester, you have to do very well at all of those things because if you do well at all of those things, you can go any way you want after that because you're now a proven commodity. And you might find that my three found schools that they love and it worked out great. But a lot of people find they don't like exactly where they are or they're not that happy with the major or some, some other aspect. But if you do very well in your first semester, you get to pick your place. You're a proven commodity and you will not have an option. So don't, um, don't put, there's always some stress involved, but don't worry about it. Just try to uh, see if you can get a higher batting average in Sweeney this year. <laughs> Good luck with that. Impossible. No, 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 no. I don't think I can win. Your question. Just put it on the ground and run. I know how fast it is. Anybody else? No. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. think I've asked you this question, but so now that you've looked at some schools, I'm just interested. In, do you have uh, kind of your own list of priorities? What was it about Howard that stood out to you? So in their freshman dorms, they have a beauty salon <laughs> in their freshman dorms. So that really I get me. you. It, I'm like, with you. It really sold me there because I was like, you know, I got to figure out where I'm going to get my hair done when I'm there. <laughs> I'm with you. My nails done. Like, this I is practicality. Yeah, yes. that was like, that was what really was like, OK, like, that's, that has, it had a lot of resources. And I was like, that really <laughs> I'm with you. I learned the skill early, so I, I had some more choices, but I, I feel like I, I don't necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> they also do polishing. You know. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to both of you. I'm yeah. sure you'll yeah. do great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to come and see us. Okay. Um, thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, now we get to the boring stuff. I was hoping we'd have a bright spot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay, so we're going to get to the consent no, agenda no. vote, <laughs> which is the that's February 14th, 2024 regular session minutes for release, and also the warrants, which we have listed, um, which I'm just going to read off the numbers, which is uh, EP warrant 1130. 1131, payroll warrant 17, payroll warrant 17.1, and that is it. Um, so at this time, we'll have any discussion if there is any discussion. Um, and otherwise, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve payroll warrants as presented. Second. OK. Oh, what about the consent agenda? Sorry, I mean, um, the. Minister, release. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, can I add that? Yes. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the session minutes for release as well as payroll warrants as shown. Second. Awesome. All those in favor, say aye. 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 
right. Consent agenda passes. Madam Chair, I'll abstain because I wasn't here for the four, uh, February 14th meeting. Oh, I apologize for that, Joyce. Thank you for keeping me online. So, Joyce, abstain. Okay. Um, next, we're going to move on um, to new business, which first is the approval of the Air Shirley Regional School uh, trip to Greece Islands um, in June 2025 with Mrs. Capasso. I can't say her first name. I'm sorry. She was my teacher, and I can't call her by her first name. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bean. I have problems saying her last name. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Hey. Hello, I'm Lolly Capasso. I'm also known as Eleanor Capasso. You can have your choice of what to call me. Um, I have been employed, for those of you who do not know me, this is my 31st year in the district. Oh, by the way, my name didn't appear on that slide. First day of school. <laughs> um, um, I am running and have been running since about 2016 the Air Shirley Regional High School Travels Abroad. Um, for those of you who don't know, our first trip was to Costa Rica, I believe, in 2017. Um, then we followed up with Italy, and then we followed up with Greece. The pandemic hit, and we canceled a trip to London, Paris, and Normandy, and we canceled a trip to the Amalfi Coast. So last year with Mr. Christie and Dr. Renda's uh, permission, we began to pursue again traveling abroad. We switched companies. Um, we are now in passport travel. And our first trip is taking off June 13th to Puerto Rico. We decided to keep the trip more local in case, gosh forbid, something pandemic hit again and I could get the kids home to, from a country that was a territory and we can get you home fast. Um, we're branching out a little bit now. I would like to, in our next trip in June of 2025 to be to Greece again. However, it's a little bit of a twist. Um, yes, we have traveled to Greece in the past. This will be a Grecian cruise. Now, not just a cruise where you know we do conga lines and things of that nature. Um, I'm sure that does. That's happen. educational. Huh? That's educational. Yeah. Thirty. <laughs> it's called physical therapy. Combo. No, not good. Um, it's work. It's more. Uh, we are would be going to um, the islands this time. So we would be traveling to, and I believe you may have something in your packet, to um, Padmos, uh, Rhodes, Santorini, and Mykonos. So more of an island here. This is also probably our most expensive trip that I have ever taken uh, with the kids. It's roughly four. It's roughly four thousand eight hundred dollars. That includes everything except spending money. So that includes all your air, your transfers, your hotels, your meals, with the exception of maybe a, you know, a gelato in between, um, everything is included. So the price is rather high, I'm aware of that, but it is also, I believe, a seven day cruise, or a six day cruise, I'm sorry, a six day cruise, and it would occur at the end of the school year, so students would not maybe miss the last three days of school. Depending. I know cruise ships depart only on Mondays. We would leave the Friday before school lets out and go from there. So I'm here seeking approval and here to entertain any questions you may have concerning uh, this tour. And yes, I do understand that the price is an issue. We do not do fundraising. That is up to the students themselves to take on that task by themselves. So I always address that one first. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yep. Yes. Right. How many students are you planning? Um, are you for this up? trip, I have to have three chaperones because I, I have three chaperones for this one. But at, believe it or not, I res I got permission for the third chaperone through the agency because I had enough travel points through the other company. Oh. They gave me the chaperone for this one. I will not leave without three because it's your own. So I need three chaperones, which would roughly be 24 students, 24 travelers, which is not, I mean, the price is what's the iffy part. It's 
a lot of money. They do make payment plans. It's roughly $300 a month up until, I think, the February before we leave. It's a large investment. So my minimum this time is 24. And I uh, talked to the travel company and I said, we will cancel if I don't get 24 by X amount of date. And that's just the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. It's a safety issue for me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So when did you, when do you need that line? Um, when do I need the, the number? It depends on when we start rolling this out. Okay. It'll probably be about four months in. So if I began, I, I have been advertising just for informational purposes mm -hmm. to see where the interest is. I have about 30 names. Um, I'm assuming by June I would make a final call. By June of this year. June of this year. Mm -hmm. The option was also floated that this could possibly be um, a parent also trip, but that's something we still have to sort of work around. It is a, I can't, it's a, that's $9,000 now. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's a scary amount of money. Um, for the trip, um, what's the criteria for the students that, that go? I take anybody who wants to go. So, and we are including, um, with contracts signed, seniors who will have technically graduated the week before. Mm -hmm. um, they will sign a super duper special contract stating that they follow all US rules. <laughs> Any other rules? Rules of different Europe. <laughs> they yeah. know what that means. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Is this run through educational tours still? I'm sorry? Is this operated through educational tours? It is not through the same company. This is through Passports. It is a separate company. Oh, okay. yeah. After the last okay. fun time we had, um, we are no longer able to use them. Yeah, we were on the receiving end of that in 2020. But you'll be happy to know that um, the U.S. has created a U.S. marching band with five students, I mean eight students from each of the 50 states. And Darren has been selected. And we're going over June, uh, June 6th for the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. So we'll be doing our Normandy evening. You tried to keep us. I tried to get there. Yeah, tried to get us to Normandy. <laughs> that was like 70, 75th, 75th yeah. anniversary mm -hmm. of Normandy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. So we'll be there with we'll Oh, that's start. wonderful. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> that's that's his trip of a lifetime. I'm yeah, it sure. is. Yeah, it is. Do I have any other? Anyone else? Yes, Joyce. Oh, uh, I think this is very interesting because many times when you're on the ships, they will give lectures on what they're going to be seeing and what the history is and what you know. It's not just like go. You no, know, this so isn't just a cruise. There, there, yeah. There's quite a bit here that is not listed here. I yes. would think. Right. Um, passports, because they cater to a student audience, is first and foremost primarily educationally based. Mm -hmm. um, I know that from traveling prior that uh, kids come home with more language. I mean, Greek is not a, a very easy language to learn. Um, but, you know, I know those who went with me, you know, we were saying Kalimara and Kalisara for days and days and days. Good morning and good evening. And even though it wasn't evening, they had to say it. Um, but those kinds of, I mean, they just, it's the cultural exchange. You are immersed in the culture. Um, you're immersed in the food. Um, I've never had better yogurt than in Greece. Oh, Greek yes. yogurt, huh? Gee, Best Greek it. yogurt ever. <laughs> the, only cl the closest place I've gone is Tarpon Springs in Florida, which is a Greek fishing village. Except for really good Greek food, go to Tarpon Springs. But it's educationally based. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It looks good. I trust you. Thank you. I I do. I was trying not to be educationally based at the back of your classroom, and you forced it. So I have firsthand knowledge that you will make sure <laughs> it is educational. Wow, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, absolutely. So if we don't have anything else. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'd make a motion that we approve Mrs. Capasso's uh, proposal 
for um, uh, Athens trip in uh, June 14, 2025, as described tonight. Wait a second. Second. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Go Thank and have you. Them. I appreciate that. Thank you. I will be back to probably ask for one more trip. <laughs> all right. Next year. Thank you. That's cool. For I apologize. I'm just signing off on this. Sure, sure. <laughs> <with me. laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to look to Dr. Renda so that we can discuss the approval of the grants awarded. Thank you. So we have uh, four grants to make you aware of tonight that we have been awarded. Um, some of these are recent, and there was one uh, that we got uh, a few months ago that we're just bringing to the school committee now. The first is the uh, Massachusetts Department of Public Health Behavioral Health Grant for $105,658. Uh, this grant is to support the behavioral health needs of students. It's a three-year grant um, from February uh, 1st of this year through December uh, 31st, uh, 2026. Uh, this grant is uh, really based on prevention, um, uh, prevention of, of uh, substance abuse and um, also reducing the, the needs for students to be outside of their classroom. Um, the way the grant puts it, it is re reduce the need of timeout rooms, but it's really what their aim is, is to keep students in class. Uh, so we're looking at this grant to use to provide supports for some of our students um, so that we can provide for the need before there is a need to be removed from the classroom. Uh, the second is a DESI grant, uh, Social Emotional Learning Grant, for $150,000. That is actually from January 19th of this year until June 30th of this year. So that is um, a good amount of money to spend before the end of the year. Um, this could be used for uh, looking at some of our, our Tier 1 social emotional curriculums. Uh, we are also exploring and working with DESI to see if that can pay part of an Adjustment Council salary. We are still waiting on confirmation of that. Uh, that would allow us opportunities to, to use what we were using that funding for for something else. We've also been awarded a uh, DESI IDEA improvement grant uh, for $16,890. And this is to provide uh, professional development for our special educators who will be implementing a new IEP process uh, beginning next year. And we are also awarded a grant of $15,000 through DESI. This is the Homeless Emergency Port Grant. This is for the uh, migrant shelter uh, that is uh, currently in air. Uh, we received this money, I believe, a couple of months ago, and this is supp to support the educational needs of students residing in emergency shelters. That is a one-time grant. That is not the daily $104 a day funding uh, that we um, have received one payment for um, and expect at least two, uh, two more payments from DESI before the end of the year. The um, SEL grant for one, is there a way if you some consulting um, contract prepay to meet that. But the time, time period to spend that kind of money. But yeah. if you were able to negotiate a year or two year contract for a support program existing in a prepay status, does that meet the requirements of the grant? We can't prepay. Uh, prepaying is not allowed. What we can do, what we will be able to do is spend every single cent of this grant. What, uh, there is a process to have this fund something that we have already funded through our general fund. We just have to make sure that it is very clear where that money has gone and it was spent. Um, it's, I, I, I believe the technical term is, is journaling over the money. I believe that's what it is. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Um, I know we will, we will spend every cent of this grant, which will then possibly free up other funds to do things like uh, that you are suggesting. Uh, we just have to make sure that we follow um, the RFP um, to the T, which, which we will do. Uh, Jane Mooney, our grants director, is already in contact with DESI, um, asking if, if the easiest way to do this is to have it pay part of her salary, because that would be a relatively big chunk right. of this. Um, but it, it is it's money that we, we need and, and, and will spend. 
and hopefully this will help alleviate um, some of the burden that we'll be carrying into next year. Joyce, yeah. did you have something? Okay. Um, so on that first grant, and I'm going to ask a dumb question. I know the answer already, but I'm just hopeful. So that is not each year for three years, is it? That is the total for the That's three the years. Total. So yes. I need to divide that by three. Uh, essentially. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it comes out enough to open the door. Um, you know, it's it's actually that's a you know thirty just over thirty thousand yeah. dollars a year is a nice is a, a nice amount of money to get for for this type of work. It will be um, it's we're very happy we're receiving, and we are we are receiving we're writing uh, many more grants and um, receiving more grants than we have in the past. Uh, some of them at the higher price point, but but we are applying for grants for anywhere from five thousand to. Um, millions of dollars so uh, we we are happy to take um, anything that we can get that can help help our kids and, and teachers awesome. um, well first I want to say thank you for being fiscally responsible and applying for grants and making sure that we're getting what we need and trying every avenue um, before we even reach you know our towns um, given the conversations that we have been having centering around providing the best atmosphere um, for our students. Um, what I was wondering is, what does it look like when you are, and I'm not saying this is exactly what your, you know, like your exact plan, but for the behavioral health grant, does it, it uh, according to the guidelines, could that be something centering around, um, for example, there's DBT skills that can be provided, particularly at um, the elementary age. So for example, um, if you notice that particularly elementary age kids wear their emotions on their face very easily. They haven't learned yet, you know, how to um, hide them as well, um, unless there's trauma involved. So uh, typically what happens is if children can learn how to acquire DBT skills, which is you teach them an acronym, usually it could be anywhere from three to four letters. So for example, stop, right? So let's say a child is kind of getting spun up, they're anxious, not necessarily angry. Um, what that helps them do is it's a skill to help them practice so that in the moment when they do get anxious, they can remember stop, and usually you have a stop sign in front of it, and it means, um, hold on, <laughs> I'm gonna remember, now that I use the example. So it's uh, <laughs> stop, um, I can't remember T, observe, um, proceed. I can't remember what T is. T is obviously the important component that I'm not remembering right now, but <laughs> in tier one, Given that you're having like a tier one, it's kind of one of those things that um, for social emotional learning, it can assist them with staying in the class. It also assists the teacher to kind of have time to navigate between maybe they're in the middle of teaching a you know, lesson and they can't quite get to the kids. Um, so is that something where maybe you provide a, I don't want to say curriculum because I think that's not the right verbiage for it, but um, either providing like PD for a, you know, um, those educators that would implement that, or is it a different type of grant? Well, that specifically, I'm not sure. I'd, okay. I'd have to look into that. But um, first, I would ask what the the acronym DPT, because I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Dialectical behavior therapy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Louder, please. Sir. Dialectical behavior therapy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some of those strategies uh, are being actually taught through our, our tier one uh, second step, and I. Uh, believe possibly in trails of wellness mm -hmm. though I'm not as familiar with the curriculum and that's some of the things that is that are pre-taught for the you remember the common corners that were implemented in all the yeah. schools so the common corners are a place a student would take those strategies that they've been taught during those lessons and actually go to the common corner to, to utilize sometimes they can do that from their uh, from their seats but but the common corner would have some other um, devices there that could help them um, uh, do this. I can find out for you uh, it, whether or not uh, this could be used for that. I, I don't know offhand. It was really more about class time and prevention for, from my understanding, but it, I have not reviewed that RFP in, in quite a while. So uh, what I will do is have a conversation with uh, Lorraine Wilson and Jay Mooney, our grant writer, and uh, we'll get you that answer. Okay, thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I just had a question on the um, the homeless emergency support grant. 
did they require you to like allocate that specifically to those students or are you just kind of putting it so generally it had to, towards it, um, it did yes it had to be something that we were using that would help those students and, and quite what we use that for um, that 15,000 was for cartwheel I think we presented on that so cartwheel is a virtual therapy service that we actually had qualified for a grant through the Department of um, Health um, they pre-qualified us for 15000 for the grant. The district would have to pay the other $15,000. And what that gives oh, okay. us is 50, 50 virtual counseling um, therapy slots for our students. We can get a, any student in the district, we can get into therapy in two days, um, which is yeah. insane time frame uh, yeah. right now. Yeah. If you are okay. looking for a, uh, like a typical uh, therapeutic service right now, you're looking at anywhere from six months to, yes. to a year to get in. So it's a it's a two-day turnaround. It is virtual. Uh, some students prefer that, some some don't. It really depends on the individual, but we are taking full advantage of that. Oh, great. Um, so when we have a student, whether they're in that shelter or not, mm -hmm. um, with a severe need, we, we do a referral, we get them in very quickly. Now, oftentimes what happens, it's kind of a bridge. So they'll be in that until a slot opens up where they can be in person. Oh, okay. Um, but it's... It, it seems to be working great. I believe this is a grant that we are uh, going to qualify for um, uh, uh, right away through the Department of Health again. Um, so it was really kind of a no-brainer. It was, yeah. they were giving us $15,000. We need an additional fifteen, dollars and um, you know, we have kids from, from every school who are, who are enrolled in this now. So oh, that's that, great. That was for the, the grant writers, kind of a general question, is that person like actively just pursuing grants everywhere and then coming to you when they find them, or how do you how are you kind of searching? Because I do this all day at work, yeah. but um, it, it's I both. mean, there's so many different places you can look. So yeah, it's both. So he's coming to us when he comes across something that we think he thinks we may be interested in. We're also sending things to him because we're bombarded with opportunities through email yeah. and okay. the commissioner's updates uh, uh, about things. Um, what we're trying to do though is not we're trying to be responsible we don't want to change what our mission and vision is and chase the money we're, we're trying to find grants that are going to support what we are already doing or what we want to do mm -hmm. um, not just saying hey this is a large chunk of money let's yeah. let's change the direction where, where we think we should go chase chasing the grant wins which yeah. I'm sure you doing what you do you've heard that yeah. I'm sure before um, which is it's challenging because sometimes there could be a grant that we would probably get but it would really kind of turn us in the direction we don't want to go yeah um, one of you know one that we did get that I wanted to make sure you had an invite was the uh, farm to, to schools um, we got that last year uh, we, we presented but I think the smoothie machines are going to be up and running relatively mm -hmm. soon so we wanted to make sure we invite school committee to come try a, a, a smoothie these are, are crazy machines um, <laughs> But yeah, it's a combination. I'm sorry I got off track there for, for a moment. Um, it's a combination of, of uh, Mr. Mooney finding them and asking if we'd be interested and then us sending him grants saying we need, we need your assistance with this. For instance, I emailed him today. I need his assistance with the um, Student Opportunity Act grant. The state completely overhauled how that is um, done. It was typically a 25, 30 minute grant for me to write. Um, that's not the case any longer. It is a uh, huge process for a very small amount of money for us. So, um, yeah, you know, Jay jumped right on it and, and yeah. he's, he's um, getting that process started for us. We have to prioritize. And just, yeah. yeah, and to be clear, what we're gonna be using that for, um, I think moving forward is we are, um, we have used Effective School Solutions the last couple of years in the high school um, to meet some clinical needs of some of our um, neediest kids. It's been great. It's really worked. It, we, my first year here, we lost, I believe, 13 students either to uh, transferring to an alt high school or dropout. The last year, I believe it was one, and this year it is still very, um, it's one, maybe two, and I, I think that the students who we've lost weren't even involved in that program there are other factors so it's worked really well what we're doing this year we we took one um, clinical support from ESS we hired internally to be the other clinical support we're trying to model our internal program after ESS because we believe we can do this on our own um, and save actually save a, a, a great deal of money um, for that one of the things that we have done though in the recent weeks is we um, ESS contacted us about a grant 
that we could apply for that we would allow us to hire them as consultants. Um, so they, we could take a step back, it would be less money, it would be a grant that would pay for the services to hire them to consult the program that we're running internally, which would be great for a year as we really kind of work out the kinks on our own. So that's another way that we often um, get grants. People who yeah. could be recipients of that grant money contact, contact us directly saying, hey, you should apply for this grant, we can work together. And that's in this good. case, it was um, kind of a no-brainer. If we could keep them on for consultants, we would love to. If money wasn't an issue, <laughs> we, would keep, we would just keep them on because it's, yeah. it's been a great program. Uh, but it is, it, it is a very costly program. Uh, it was completely worth it, um, it really, provided a, a need that our high school needed uh, in the moment. But it, it is something that we, I think we can replicate um, and provide at a much uh, a better price point. That's great. Thank you. Um, I was just curious, yeah. about a quick question. Yeah. Um, what's the latest number of migrants, students, and in, in, in which schools, do you know? So the, uh, there's 22 total enrolled uh, the majority of those students, I believe it's 15 at Page, four at um, the middle school, uh, and three at the high school. Is that? That's 22. I'm thinking, uh, Your math is right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Charlie's going to double check my numbers. Um, if, it's, if that's not it exactly, it's very close to that. While Charlie is checking, I do want to say I have um, had the opportunity to check in with um, the high school student families, um, and it's nice when I hear from the student that they feel welcomed. Um, and um, they had a couple of, um, I wouldn't even say issues, I think it was just a matter of changing, right? So it's a lot of change for, for one kid. Um, and I think it's a sophomore, maybe? I believe. I don't think it was his freshman year. Um, and the one thing that um, he kept saying was he was encouraged by the fact that um, he felt everyone around him really believed that he could do it, whatever it was that he was trying to navigate. Um, so it was very um, uh, uplifting to hear that because he, he didn't know me from anybody else. I just happened to say, hey, how are you doing? Um, and, and that's what he said, so I haven't talked to any of the other um, families, but I did like hearing that from him. He was really encouraged, and um, his mom told me he's doing well um, in school, in that you know she's a lot less apprehensive than she initially was, kind of you know as a parent coming in with the what if and such big changes. So that was encouraging to you. So Regina, we can't confirm those numbers uh, right now, but what I can do is email the school committee tomorrow with those exact numbers. Yeah, okay. that's right. It doesn't have to be okay. exact. I yeah. just had, it's I a page, a page Hill Top by far has the, yeah. the highest enrollment. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are many more than 22 students uh, or school-aged children who are living at the shelter, but many of them uh, choose to stay in their school of origin. Mm -hmm. So though they're living there, they can choose to be transported uh, back to wherever they were attending school. So we, we transport kids to Boston, Lawrence, Fitchburg, um, Lowell. Lowell. Lynn? Um, Is Lynn on there? I don't think so. It's a multitude of places. Yeah. We would um, prefer that they would choose to, to, right, to come to school. Right, because their cost is right. still. Mm -hmm. We are splitting the, the, that transportation cost with the school of origin, which is, it's, it's expensive. We are, there is some reimbursement that we would get next year for that, and it's about 80% of that is reimbursed. The target is about 80%. The target is 80%. 80%. And does also the cost per student go to those school systems? Mm -hmm. The Air Shirley? Um, no. Well, Where they're pay. enrolled. Yes. The, the, We're not paying the, the aid money. Would go right. The hundred four dollars a day. Yes. Yes. Okay. But no cost to us. No. Right. Yeah. Outside transportation. Outside transportation. Yeah. Right. All right. Is, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Is there any conversation? Like, do you guys reach out to them to see if they want to come next year, so that we're prepared in case, like, all of them happen to be going to Page Hilltop, and then all of a sudden, you know? Yes. Yeah, so w what we are trying to do is work with our Mickey and Evento liaison, because typically, what would happen is you, you you want to provide that school of origin 
for a um, reasonable amount of time. Typically, that's the end of the school year. Yeah. And then okay. we would have the option to ask them to come to come to school. We don't know currently if this is a different situation because of, of the migrant shelter status. So we're trying to find that out. Okay. Um, but the 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 mock mock in the shelter they have actually been tremendous to work with. Um, okay. They get back to us quickly. Um, you know, except for some of the confusion about the transportation in the beginning, they've been uh, they've been great. So we will uh, continue to work with that. Mr. Deppie's been in contact. Unfortunately, our McKinney Vento liaison retired, and we have we were never assigned a new one. Um, but Mr. Deppie was able to convince someone who does it to um, be our liaison. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was it. So we we are getting answers, but not necessarily as fast as we did when we had someone um, okay. just designated to us. So what we are we are working on that to try to get people to to make the decision to okay. to, to come to us. Okay. Joyce, did you have a question? So I guess we're all on the same point here. Um, so you mentioned that uh, the fifteen thousand grant could be used for like counseling. Mm -hmm. Is it also used like for? Chromebooks and hotspots, and it says educational needs. The fifteen thousand. Yeah, it could have been it, absolutely, but we we so use. It's what you can do with it. it. We could have done anything we wanted to with that okay. that money. Yeah, that fifteen thousand. Yeah. Um, it was just a one time, um, or well, one time grant for right. for districts who have a, a migrant shelter in their in their district. And I, I think the name is unfortunate because it's not really a migrant shelter. Many of the no, students homeless, are, yeah. are just homeless. They, they've lived in Massachusetts for the majority of their life or other states. Mm -hmm. um, um, not, I think a, a lot of people, when they hear migrant, that they're thinking that these are mm -hmm. uh, people coming from outside of the United States. And no. there may be some, but um, most of them are, are, are citizens that were either with us here in Massachusetts or um, in other states. Well, it's right to say homeless mm -hmm. shelter, not yeah. migrant shelter mm -hmm. in a sense, right? Yeah. yeah. People are homeless. It's an emergency shelter. It's a, yeah, an emergency. Um, mm -hmm. it actually is. So I have to relate an experience right with this because I was doing my middle of the night shopping at um, Hannaford's, which we call not Hannaford's because it's changed name so much. <laughs> And so I get out of my car, it's about 8.30, right? The other night it was warm. And there's kids playing tag over there. Not it, not it, that, that, that. I'm like, this is cool, can I go play? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it certainly was a bright spot. You know, you think that it's not, but it is. So, interesting. So, um, so I do believe we have, we, yes, we do need a vote. Um, so if we don't have any more discussion, then I will make a motion. I mean, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the 23-24 uh, uh, school year grant awards as listed tonight um, from our administration. Second. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, passes. Thank you. There's that. I am going to move on to Mr. Plunkett for the certification of the FY25 budget. Madam Chair, we have a full presentation ready to go, but what I would suggest is that we start with the changes mm -hmm. since the last presentation. Yes. Uh, we have been working with uh, uh, the member towns, Aaron Shirley, and uh, we've met with our local representatives, uh, state reps. Uh, it was... Uh, Jamie Eldridge was there at Cronin, Cronin's office. Cronin's office was, was also representative. Okay. And, and uh, the gentleman from Cena. Le Mr. Cena. Mr. Cena. Cena. So uh, they heard, our, we, we plead to them about the, uh, the, the grants, the uh, grant funding going down, and the ESSER 3, the federal uh, COVID money is going away. And uh, really trying to keep these positions in the budget or get them into the general fund budget. So the first slide um, I'm going to go to is number, page 11. It's the budget drivers and projections. We have, there, we have a couple changes here. Mm -hmm. So this was in the, in the prior version, uh, the last time we presented, this was um, about 13, the middle section of drivers was about uh, 300, uh, uh, 1.3 million. 
We've lowered it by reducing the amount for the ESSER positions. We had 768,000 there. We've reduced that to $250,000. Uh, we think this would probably get us uh, three to five positions. Uh, we were thinking uh, probably the behavior specialist uh, and some counseling. Uh, we also, as part of this, uh, we would uh, suggest or propose a, a transfer from E and D once it's certified to uh, get the rest of those positions that, in that we wanted. That would get us almost half of the positions that are in ESSER three right now into the into the budget. Uh, we would m suggest a transfer into from uh, E and D to Choice, and we could move some of our teaching salaries into Choice to make room for a couple more positions from the ESSER three grant. This way, we could phase it in over a couple of years and do the same thing the following year in 26, probably at a smaller scale, hopefully, but it's something I think uh, the member towns are uh, uh, really uh, glad that we proposed this kind of compromise, uh, and we think it'll, it'll work uh, for our, our budget getting passed at town meetings. So this is uh, the changes, those are the changes on the driver slide. So we, we do believe, though, between the, the transfer for me and D and the $250,000 uh, line uh, for the ESSER funds, as well as some revenue in that we have. We have um, building rentals, we have a tuition in, um, between using that and hopefully some grants that we, we believe without, without any major changes happening from now until the end that we would be able to, to get those 12 positions not all in the general fund, but be able to get some of those positions into the general fund next year, float these positions for an additional year for services that our kids need, and then try to move some more in uh, the following year, and hopefully through some of our revenue streams in, building rentals, tuitions in, school choice, to, to keep reducing that number until the majority of these positions are in the, in the general fund. But this will be a... Um, what we were thought would hopefully be a two, two or three year process is probably looking like a three to five year process, but we can, I believe we'll, we'll be able to do it as long as there's no huge changes of enrollment um, between now and in the end of the, the school year. Is that fair? There will be some, some cuts, and by cuts that would be a change in positions, but I, we, I don't know if we will have to, though someone's job may change, um, we probably aren't at this point, as of today, with what we know today, I want to be very clear, um, have to cut any, any teaching position, any teachers. A position might change, but we, I don't believe we'll have to cut a teacher, uh, an actual uh, person's job. Does that make sense? That does. Did I articulate that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any questions on that? Yes, Joyce? <laughs> so, um, the amount that we were initially considering for me and D was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm that sorry. that um, does that number change? Along with the two hundred fifty, would give us six hundred thousand total. Um, we are that is some, that is just the near mark that we made, uh, uh, so we could get six hundred thousand total for those positions. Yeah, but we didn't vote that. No, yeah, it's right. pending the school committee approval. Right. And any. Any transfer from E and D um, will not affect the assessment because we will be transferring it well, to the general fund and then right into one of our other funds. Yeah, instead of cutting something, mm -hmm. you're not going to see it on the assessment, right? Correct. And because um, I don't remember my name, um, so what is the balance then in E and D? What would we have left in E and D? And right is now there a recommended percent percentage for E and D? Well, can't go budget? over. 5% of, right. of the operating budget, uh, or it, you have to uh, add Correct. it to the budget. Right. Um, but we're at 1.1 million uh, right now, so we'd be down to 800,000 if we took out 300,000. Right, I just couldn't remember the numbers, thank you. Right, I'll do a memo if, if we're gonna propose uh, the transfer with all the balances, so you can see. Do we almost have to have that? And I know we're on a deadline here, I understand that I'm not being too bad. Um, that um, should we have that in place before we make the final approval on this? Or we can still change this if it goes We can down. recertify anytime. We can recertify right. anytime? Okay. Yes. 
it. We, we are hoping, though, that we can certify tonight because it does need to be certified 45 days before the first town meeting, and this would be the only opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just, just making you aware. Thank you. So moving on to the next slide, there's no change. This is the governor's uh, aid package, uh, basically uh, $53,000 uh, increase to revenues, and they decreased our uh, expenditures by 190, so we're about 245,000 to the good on the revenue. We'll keep an eye on this and keep this updated as we go through the process. The foundation enrollment is where the state starts or where they set the uh, Chapter 70 program. I don't know if we spent any time on this at the last presentation, but they take all these classifications of expenditures and they calculate how much the district should be paying for each of these classifications. And then all of our students are across the top or divided into uh, classifications of columns uh, by grade or by special ed or voc ed or English language learners. And we get a grand total of $23 million, 835,000, which is our foundation budget. Uh, which equates to 14037 per student. And this is important in the calculation of Chapter 70. So we go into the summary. Um, to the left, you see our calculation for Chapter 70. Basically, uh, they show what we had last year. Uh, they take that foundation budget of 23 million and subtract the required local contribution that's also um, calculated by the state to get uh, the amount of chapter 70 we should have. So at 8.1 million, that's less than we got last year. So we're a hold harmless district. And we get the minimum aid, which at this point in the process is $30 a student. So we get $50,000 uh, increase to chapter 70. Now the top uh, right side is a, the comparison to last year. And two very important numbers, you can see the foundation enrollment, uh, we're down 14 students, uh, but the foundation budget is up uh, over 3%. I can't see if that goes on that one. You're right, it's 3.10. Yeah, 3.1%. 3 uh, increase to the foundation budget. And the next number down, the required local contribution that's set by the state for the member towns to pay is up 5.6%. So those are pretty significant increases uh, when you look at a reduction in foundation enrollment of 14. Uh, the state is pushing out the foundation, foundation uh, budget to correct for health insurance, uh, special ed costs, um, English language uh, learners and, and disadvantaged economic students. So uh, it's something that keeps getting pushed uh, every year as they try to correct for it. Uh, and it is uh, attributing to the, uh, the overall increases to our budget. I think we looked at this one at the last presentation. This one splits that foundation enrollment between Aaron Shirley. For FY25, uh, we've got uh, 1,698 students, 972 from Air, 726 from Shirley. That's down 15 from for Shirley, one, up one for Air, and then they split uh, that 15 million 652 uh, by the percentage of their enrollment, um, and what based on what the towns are can afford to pay. Uh, so they come up with 9.7 for Air, 9.7 million, and 5.9 million for Shirley. That's an increase to Air of 648,000, which is pretty significant for an RLC increase. And Shirley, uh, even though they're down 15 students, they still have an increase. They have an increase of 189,000. So you're probably thinking, how do they calculate that required local contribution? This is Air's contribution. Uh, and on the left side, uh, the highlighted number, 11 million, that's the target foundation budget that, uh, or f target re required local contribution that for air that the state has calculated uh, based on uh, real estate and income for the town. On the right hand side, the, uh, the upper right, that first, uh, starting with row 13, 
they're calculating what air can afford to pay. So they take last year's required local contribution and they multiply it by the growth factor, which gives you the new required local contribution of 10,561. That is not, uh, does not reach the cap of 11.3 for the target that they've made. So air has fallen short of the target. Uh, and based on how far they are from the target, they will add uh, a 1% or a 2% increment to get air closer to the target uh, each year. So air is having a $100,000 increment added on to their required local contribution of 10 million. Um, sorry about that. 10,561,000 uh, for a total uh, required local contribution of 10,662,000. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got it. All right. So that's how they calculate the re required co local contribution. AIR gets split between AIR Shirley, the district, and also Neshoba Tech uh, based on enrollment. And you can see AIR in the bottom sections is the FY25 information. Uh, AIR has 90% of uh, the enrollment as compared to the Neshoba Tech, uh, which has 63 students, uh, is just under 9%. Uh, so they split the required local contribution of 10.6 million between AIR and, and Neshoba Tech, and it's an increase of 648,000 to the town of AIR. They actually have a decrease in the foundation enrollment to Neshoba Tech, so that is a decrease of 46,000 and it offsets a little bit of their increase. So the total increase to air is 601,000. And Shirley's calculated the same way. Their grand total, they, are, they have not reached target either. So they're, being, uh, they're having a 1% added uh, increment to their calculated uh, required count. Co uh, contribution, so the, they have a total of 6.5 million uh, for their required local contribution. And they allocate the same way between Air Shirley and Neshoba Tech. Uh, they're down, Shirley's down 15 students for, for Air Shirley, and they're up six students in Neshoba Tech. So, but the split is still about the same, 90, uh, 91 to 9%. They split that 6.5 million over the two districts. Shirley's total increase is $275,000. And, and those numbers are all state set um, and are not inclusive of our increases that we've, we've put in for our drivers. So our um, new totals uh, for the budget, the overall budget, uh, total budget, all funds all together is 36 million. $382,480. And that is a 2.5% increase overall uh, from the prior year for all funds. And we roll that to the next page for the uh, assessment. Uh, row one is the actual RLC uh, for Air and Shirley, as set by the state. The second line, uh, line number two, net school spending of above RLC is the amount that Aaron and Shirley uh, contribute above the RLC. Uh, then transportation. Transportation and rows two and three are calculated by the regional agreement, which currently with our foundation enrollment is 57% AIR, 43% uh, to Shirley. And this first subtotal shows just the operating uh, assessment. Uh, 6.5 for AIR percent and 3.5 percent for Shirley. We add in the debt uh, and then we have the total percentages of 4.9 percent overall, 6 percent to AIR, 6 percent increase and a 3.2 percent increase to Shirley. And we work very closely with uh, both uh, town managers uh, and presented to the Board of Selectmen in both towns and the FinComs, um, well, kind of both, both <laughs> FinComs in town, but uh, we, we met with them to, sh to make the same presentation that you're seeing here, and we did uh, the last of the hearing, the budget hearing meeting. 
we, we didn't get the opportunity to, to uh, on Saturday to let um, the Shirley Fincom know that there actually was a, a penalty um, added on to the state by, by being below the required local a, contribution. An increment. An increment. I wouldn't call it a penalty. My, my apologies. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> um, uh, chances are, even with what we're asking um, in the in for the 250,000 additional dollars, and that's so that increment is probably going to be assessed next year as well. Uh, can, you, can you tell me more about the what is the target specifically, and why are we getting the one percent increment? What target? The target is they look at the town's real estate values, income per capita, and they determine what uh, what would be a fair foundation budget or a required local contribution for the foundation budget for that specific town. Then to kind of like offset that, they go and they calculate, you take your last year's required local contribution and, mul and multiply it by a growth factor that the DOR, they set all the tax rates, they set um, the tax levies, so they, they work very closely with the towns in setting those rates so they know uh, what what increases they're going to have, so they, they base it on that. And AIR was 4.9% uh, growth rate, so that was multiplied by last year's RLC. So that's your new um, target. I mean, not your target, that's your new required local contribution. And then if you're within, if you're far enough away from the target, they will give you a 1 or a 2% uh, increment to get closer to the uh, target. So that's like, Speed, speeding it up, phasing it in, the increases. Actually, both towns' growth rate. Um, yeah. Shirley's was Shirley uh, went at one point two percent right? as well. Yeah. Shirley's was at three point two percent, I believe. Two point four, uh, up from two point eight before last year. That's choice. Have we heard back from the towns yet? Are they giving us any direction or? plea or threat um, as to we've had a, a, absolutely productive meetings with both town managers yeah I know we have been and the number that is represented in that ESSER line um, is something that we have been told both towns can can absolutely live with can you? Mm -hmm. so does that mean because they typically will say if they avoid what if they're supporting a yes or no our impression is that both towns would be supporting the finance committee as well as I, I, so I, I can't speak for the finance committees I can tell you that our meetings with the town managers have told us that this is a number um, that is manageable for each town okay. uh, yeah. general observations from Saturday's review of the finance board um, <clears throat> masterful job by Dr. Renda never been to a finance review meeting where you talk almost nothing about numbers and finances. It was amazing and excellent restraint um, in dealing with numbers that wanted to talk about value instead of cost. You know, we try to have you synopsize improvement plans as we sit here to watch four schools give hour and a half presentations and then your thoughts for the district and how detailed all that is try to justify what we're spending without ever talking about what the amount was. But overall, you, when you go into a review with finance board, the last thing you want to talk about is finances. So it was, could not have been better. <laughs> I asked that. We just ate up the entire time and never got to this page. Never even got to it. So it was absolutely not. So I was more worried about Charlie. I thought he was going to throw something from the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature was going up. But absolutely superior job. But, it also did point out the fact that they, they clearly, from the questions they were asking, do not understand the Chapter 70 aspects of this. Both towns are changing from the, the mean incomes and the cost of the properties, and that's only going to mean this thing is going to continue for quite some time. Mm -hmm. You know, so the fact that we can come up with these sort of numbers, this is. You know, we've seen those numbers the next couple of years. We continue to like, all right, you're doing a good job managing your towns and property values are up and all these things are happening, but that means you're gonna get less and less and less state money. So the burden for increasing to support these things is gonna fall on local contribution. They, they do not understand that. They absolutely do not get that part. So 
I know we talked before about how school funding works. Now the finance board in Shirley, I think it's a great time to do, I don't know who's on the air one now, but uh, it's a great time to go now because um, uh, the chair of the, the Shirley committee, Hildebrandt, he's mm -hmm. pulled papers for select, right? So oh, yes. everybody else on that board, you know, I guess. And, but they're, they're willing to work. You know, I think just from their questions, they, they want to know more, but we are absolutely going to have to do that because they're going to have to get used to figuring out how this is going to figure in because we're not going to have anywhere to turn and you're not going to be able to throw up those kind of numbers two or three years in a row. I mean, you sneak away, you know, pull some Peter and Paul stuff here to get through, but in the longer term, you know, our required contribution is going to be higher, quite a fair amount, but they're going to need to know that so they can plan that into the whatever else is going to have to happen. I completely agree. We've reached out to Mars already, and what I would love to happen is for something like that to happen this fall, yeah, September, yeah. October. The other thing that, that I'm taking away from Saturday is, is we need to invite um, both the select boards and the FinComs to be audience members during some of the school committee meetings because there is, there's a lot of detail that we go in. Um, we will certainly start to email them all the minutes. Um, once, once we can get the email addresses. Um, we'll send those out, but when we do the school improvement plans, if they're really interested in, in the programs that are running and the effectiveness, when we do the, the uh, accountability presentation um, and many of the things that we talk about over and over again, I, I mean, the, the, the proper channels to get that information would be during these meetings. So we'll we certainly share our agendas with them and um, uh, suggest that they attend. Are joint meetings ever something that happens between, like, I know Select Board will have a joint meeting with FinCom. Has there ever been a joint meeting with the school committee Cause we're and the FinCom? Maybe we're a region. Yes. Okay. On all the capital projects. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, FinCom, or Selectman, and us on mm. every capital project. That's a good idea. I think all we have to do is post, right? We all have to make sure we post and then we can... We can it just seems that. like maybe we need to be a little more um, encouraging that the participation happens it's not happening like voluntarily so maybe if we had like a joint meeting it would be a little more effective to communicate so that you you shouldn't have to do this presentation you know six times in one budget season so well the show tech does it nine times so well I mean <laughs> who's competing but I think yeah no but yeah. I mean when you're a region you end up doing to your towns of course I understand that but I mean they've done it right. to like multiple different committees in one town so if the towns were to come to our meeting. Right. I think we should. That's kind of my. I mean, yeah. your time is valuable. Is kind of what I'm getting at. So. Yeah. I think we should pick and choose uh, when we do that. For instance, if we're, if, when we present the school improvement plans and some of the initiatives that we're having, I think if an invitation is appropriate, not necessarily mm -hmm. a joint meeting, um, because really that is that is um, that is up to you all, right? You're, right? You are the school committee to ask the questions and, and to. Uh, drive us in a certain direction, um, but when it comes to finances, uh, we should we should absolutely look into that because we there is no way in a half hour block mm -hmm. we could have given the information that they were asking for in that meeting. It just um, first of all we didn't know that we were going to be talking about anything other than finances, so we didn't bring a presentation or have the the information readily available. So um, I think you make a, an excellent point. Um, that's something we should we should look into. I also want to highlight, though, um, the business and nature of a finance committee is that of finance. The value of education sits with the school committee. Um, sometimes I think uh, when we have so many questions, we can get into a rabbit hole a little bit, um, where we may have a number of questions um, that if we research a little thoroughly by simply watching the video, um, you can get those answers. So again, I think to Jim's point, it is masterful that you are able to come up with that information that you are presenting week in and week out here and be able to provide some of it at a finance committee meeting. Um, so as we can be uh, encouraging and come alongside our financial committees, I am more than happy to um, enroll in the mask uh, chapter 70 uh, funding education that's provided so that our FinCom members can sit alongside us to understand how we finance funding, where it comes from, 
Um, there's a number of educational sessions that happen throughout the year, and I do believe they do have one around the same time as Mars in September. Um, so there's a number of opportunities that we could provide so that as we have those new members that have questions just like me, I'm, a, you know, I'm still a new member for school committee and I have questions for things, you know, coming to those meetings and also they provide um, information for you to take away after that that they would be able to review. It probably would be helpful so that we kind of can bridge amongst the committees but at the same time um, be mindful about the content um, of each of the, the, the content and the purpose of why we do what we do. So we're always gonna have a connection between value, which would be the school committee, and then finance, which would be finance committee, right? Um, for each, each school. So we're more than happy, is the message, um, to provide education and understanding for anyone truly that wants to know, but especially when we're working alongside um, our peers when we're talking about funding and when we're talking about the value. Um, and I'm more than happy to follow up alongside you so that we can kind of bridge those gaps and lack of knowledge um, altogether. So it's, it's great, but I do wanna say that that is the feedback that I did get from, from all of you, is not only the masterful approach that you had, the information that you have on hand, but it's because you stay prepared. And I think that that is a key takeaway that we wanna, <laughs> we wanna highlight here. You stay prepared because you do the work. So I want to say thank you for that. And I thought I saw Joyce's hand go up, but maybe it's um, it. Following yeah. up on what you're saying there, Erica, um, I think both with AIR and the Finance Committee was there with the selectmen and asked some very good pointed financial questions. Mm -hmm. And historically, when you get someone who's new on these committees, mm -hmm. um, and right now, I was more than impressed with the Shirley Committee because they were totally up with all the information you were giving them already. Um, so it was pretty good overall. You know, I mean, they knew this. They didn't, they weren't picking it apart or why are we doing this or anything. So, because um, we also gave them a heads up earlier that, heads up guys, this is coming down the road. And that was a very good thing to yeah, do. I agree. I, I do think though our transparency may have been misunderstood at one point because, uh, and just to clarify, we had been, the, the number in the ESSER line was originally, I believe, $768,000. And that number was in there for transparency. At no point did we actually think that the two towns could split a 58-42 split of $768,000. We thought that it was important for the select boards, the school committee, and the FinCom to have an understanding of this is what it actually cost us to do business with these positions. So it was uh, it was an attempt at transparency, not an attempt to, to strong on um, the timeline right. for $768,000. I don't know if everybody did. Okay. Um, so we will continue to be transparent mm -hmm. when we have the draft of the budget saying this is what it costs. Right. We know that this number is gonna come down, but this is what it actually does cost. So when grants go away or the state cuts our funding, mm -hmm. This is, and we want to keep the services that we are providing for our students. And, and, and granted, it's not always services. It could be other things. It could be athletics. It could be right. arts. It could be it could be whatever. Um, but as of right now, it was the additions were for for mental health and, and social emotional learning, um, and and reading and recovery. Um, I think it's important to be transparent and look, this is what it costs, and here's what we're going to do to get to that number, both the school district and the and the towns. Um, well, hearing the other and working with 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 um, Robert and, 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 and Mike is, right. is they're, they're great to work with right yeah. so and um, having talked to um, a couple of other towns in around where I am most of the day uh, they're having huge overrides and stuff and they're being fought viciously mm -hmm. so um, this is nothing this is great thank you mm -hmm. and I'm gonna highlight again Adam We've been transparent since November. We've been transparent. Our intention has been transparent. We have provided education. It is there. As I was taught very young, reading is fundamental, but it is not fundamental to read. It's your choice. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna take that advice and make sure that I also am educating myself 
when it comes to our peer organizations. But I do want to highlight, as much as I know that you want to be honest in transparency, we've been honest in transparency since November. So all they had to do was watch the video and understand that. Um, and my hope is that this will be a vehicle for unity, for understanding, for knowledge, so that we can stand together and understand a little bit better. I'm not saying that there's dissension, but you can always have a lesson learned, right? Um, but again, great job, all of you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, so I believe we do need to certify the budget. So we need, do we need a vote? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm looking, thank you. Um, so I will entertain a motion. I'd make a motion that we certify the fiscal year 25 budget as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, we're moving forward. It has been certified. Approved. Madam Chair, we yes. last year I checked what we did uh, in the minutes. Yes. And we just mentioned that last number, total okay. of all funds. Okay. Because if we recertify uh, with a transfer from E&D, okay. that will change, okay. but the assessment will not. Okay, so you need to have an approval with that final number With in the it? total of all funds of 36 million, 382,490. 490 or 480. 480. Okay. I have never been so grateful to be chair. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, I'd make a motion that we certify the fiscal year 25 budget of 36382480 okay. dollars. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right, it is now certified. Correctly. Thank you. Thank you. See? Learning opportunity. All right. So we will move on to our draft for the 2024-2025 school year calendar. Dr. Brenda. So this is a, a draft draft, but there are some things that I think are, are very important that, I, that we wanted to bring up um, because there's some changes. Um, we're not ready to really present the entire calendar uh, for a couple of reasons. One is Azria is still going to come and do a joint presentation with me at the school committee about why we believe we should move to one conference day a year for each building and move to more on-demand conferences, meaning students will, will have specific drivers where a teacher will reach out to a parent for a conference because there is a, a specific need for that. Um, I know Azria believes that um, we are just about there um, for an agreement. This is something that school committee would vote on, which would change some of these other dates. But uh, really what I, I want to present today in the draft, and, and this is a big one, is we are looking at um, asking the school committee to consider um, having us start on August 23rd. That is a Friday. And the reason, and if you notice, we typically have two school days um, before school starts. So in that would be convocation, some classroom time, and then a day of PD. Um, that's not enough, P we don't have enough time in the beginning of the year, um, at least for next year, to get everything done that we need to get done. So here's the ask. We currently have 181 student days of school. Uh, we are asking that next year, school committee considers to have 180 days, and that we take a day and put it um, on that Friday the 23rd, this would allow us to have teachers have a full day setting up their classrooms, which has been an ask every year in every district since I can remember. Um, it would also allow us to then have two full days of PD. Um, one of the things that we learned uh, from the, uh, the coffee with cabinet, so it's not coffee with the superintendent anymore, it's coffee with cabinet, and I bring, bring all my friends with me. But one of the themes was that teachers are asking for professional development and dealing with trauma. Mm -hmm. And we have provided a ton of social, emotional, professional development these past two and a half years. Uh, one of the glaring omissions is trauma-informed mm -hmm. um, instruction and, and trauma-informed schooling. Uh, so that's one of the things that we want to do. Um, I know that's a, that's a big ask. Uh, we, we feel uh, that it will really, really help teachers. Having that full day in a classroom as a former teacher would be a huge help um, to them. Having the two full days of PD will help um, get us ready to open up the buildings. The other thing that it would allow us to do 
uh, is it would allow us to keep the last day of school on June 13th while still not having school the day before Thanksgiving. I know that um, we had mentioned that before. Um, I'm not sure the school committee's appetite to that, but just, just to um, give you a little bit of data, our current um, um, average daily attendance is 94%, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, on the day before Thanksgiving, uh, this past year it was 84%. In 2022 is 85 percent. 2021 not too bad at 88. So it is a it is a day that many parents are choosing um, not to send kids to school anyway. I should have ran staff attendance. Um, that slipped my mind, but I would imagine the staff attendance is probably a little bit worse on that day than it typically is. Also, um, those are really the two big. Um, the, the major changes that we're kind of ready to present. Some of the thing, other things that are going to change, um, depending if we can go to the one conference day and on-demand conferences, that would change some of the early release days that we have on there because they would no longer be needed. Um, and then we could we would consider uh, moving others because of MCAS testing, but we are not quite ready um, to, to make those changes on that. But any questions about the uh, moving from the 181 to the 180? the full day of um, classroom setup in the PD um, two days before school or the day off before Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm happy to entertain any questions or concerns. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of an initial question, um, and I've been asked this by several parents, why do we go back for two days and then have a four day weekend? Because it's a nightmare for parents that work. Like yeah. it's, there's no camps open. <laughs> it's. Um, it's just really, really challenging for working parents. So seeing that extra day, could you move that to like the week before and then could we finagle it where we start after Labor Day or is that just absolutely out of question? Because I know some school districts do start after Labor Day. Do we have, I, I'm gonna have to check, I should, I should know this, but I don't. Um, do we have in the contract that we have to start before Labor Day? No. no. We don't. We don't. Right. We could absolutely look at that. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know anyone else's opinion on it. I just know. I think it's a good idea. Every year it's like it. two yeah. days and then a day off. I'm just like, but why? Why? Right. That's a good idea. And that's just coming from a parent of tiny humans. Like I know everyone else <laughs> probably doesn't feel that way, but it's no, it's hard. I've been there. Yep. Yeah. I get that. Yes, Joy. I used so to get the my Friday the thirtieth and preach just Friday the th th August thirtieth. You're talking about right? Yeah, that day. random day off. I'm sorry. sorry. I used to get my soapbox out and preach on those days before Labor Day because that was the only time I could take my, I could go on vacation, and mm. enough staff that I and my kids could go on vacation. And I thought one of my kids was gonna have a heart attack one year because he missed that day. Um, but, so, I agree. Yeah, I <laughs> so think hard. it's a great idea. Yeah, it's a, it's. I don't know why we started doing that, really, if you want to. I think um, it's something that many, many districts do. Um, can, certainly, we, we do, get input from ASRIA that we don't and that's all it is is input they the the calendar is completely the, the up to the school committee to vote on that um, works out fine now because Labor Day is the second we go through this every single year but when Labor Day is the seventh it doesn't work so good so you can't really pick the Labor Day thing but right now I think mm -hmm. by making that change for this year it will be fine as long as everybody recognizes that when Labor Day falls later, that's not going to be possible unless you want to be here June 24th. So yeah. Just, like, it looks like you'll be able to work that around that for this year, but I just don't want to set an expectation for every year that we'll be able to do it because mm -hmm. we certainly will not be able to. Yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, I would say even if obviously after Labor Day would be, you know, preferred, but even just to get rid of that Friday, like I, I didn't know if that Friday was meant for the teachers for some kind of professional development or what that Friday it, was? It, it, it's it's not, no, the, that's a non work day for, for teachers. Okay. There are many teachers in their in their rooms uh, on that day, uh, but no, we don't hold any professional development. Okay. Um, so we... I know that would, I mean, with the 180 days, I, I mean, like you're getting that day anyways. I don't know where that would put it in June and then with the Juneteenth holiday, I know that might be tough, especially like Jim said with the... Well, Late Labor Day, but, but June 13th is often easy to get early to get out yeah. of school. Yeah, we're at least good this year. We'll just review it annually, but I think it's still a very good idea. Well, if we if, if if we simply had school that day, that would change the last day of school to, to Thursday, uh, June 12th, which would actually give us a buffer if there was only one snow day. 
Um, well, the way snow's going now, we might listen. not have any. <laughs> I don't like mentioning snow days lately after that last one, so. Um. <laughs> it's a nice day off. Yeah. Jim, you're going to Pittsburgh. Let's go over here. That was a terrible call. No, I think um. you were perfectly right because the last uh, prediction was heavy, heavy snow at 2 o'clock. Which means all the buses would have been trapped out there yeah. with bad snow. Well, so I appreciate it okay. I appreciate you softening that for me. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes you get it wrong, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, we'll let. let um, so we're, we're going to bring that back and get some input from Azria. Um, but we will, and, and we will figure out uh, when we can present to you with them about the on-demand conferences and moving to the one conference because that will have a lot of implications to the schedule. But any other questions? And a great suggestion. Any other questions about the full day uh, in the classroom? or the, the day off before Thanksgiving. And that is something that really is coming. Um, many staff uh, mm -hmm. would appreciate that. Um, and we did get some feedback from parents um, who would also prefer to, to have it off. I would have to say, it was, we had more feedback from staff on that than, than parents, but um, there were parents who were interested in not having the day before while Thanksgiving as a school day. Well, you're in this custom, just float out there December 30, 31. I mean, because the Christmas is on a Wednesday, so you have an entire week out. And, you know, New Year's Day is not the biggest mm -hmm. celebration, especially if you have kids anyway. So we might be able to sneak a couple of days there if you have to steal some days to shorten up some things. Just follow by the teachers to see what they think no. about that. I, that. That's a big vacation week, a travel week for a lot of families right. in between, the whole week in between those holidays. So. It may offer, offer us an opportunity that way where we have the entire week before off. We don't have to worry about early yeah, release for Christmas year, or stuff. This is Christmas, is, again, is in the middle of the, the, middle week. Of the month. We can absolutely bring that up to them. Uh, the one observation that I would like to make is um, I'm, I'm grateful for the astuteness of our teachers, particularly when it comes to trauma-informed um, teaching, care. Um, it is... Um, definitely I don't want to say a new endeavor but it's probably more widely heard of now um, it's even an effort that hospitals are taking when let's say in the emergency room when you're simply coming up for another distressing issue having um, certain questions um, on hand or questionnaires um, can really affect a child's school day at a very basic level um, and I'm really excited to hear about that. Um, I know for myself, um, in, um, I have freestanding inpatient psychiatric care, which is a little bit different. So we're not attached to a medical facility. It's solely psychiatric care. Um, and that's one of the endeavors that we're actively, you know, um, really trying to dig into. And some of the just small efforts that we've made in education and as far as interaction with our patients, and we do have children um, we start at age three and go all the way up to geriatric um, it can completely change how the the children react to their stay one it's scary because they're on a locked unit right but two even in the classroom setting when they hit i think it's the two-week mark um, it can make a huge amount of difference for what they are taking in um, so i really want to commend the staff um, and you all as well, trying to provide professional development at a very basic level um, to assist the kids, because that's, that's huge. So there was uh, a lot of great information shared at Coffee with Cabinet. Some, um, you know, some of it was, was hard to hear, right? But it's like with anything else, your choice is to listen, hear it, try to do something about it, or pretend it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have to say, uh, all staffs, uh, the turnouts at, at some schools, of course, were greater than others, but um, people came ready to share and uh, um, give some kind, uh, sometimes critical feedback, and, and the trauma issue came up um, at a couple different schools. Uh, I think we're going to schedule the next one for the end of this month, if I'm correct, Michelle. So one thing we will do is um, throw invites to school committee if you want to show up. We'll probably do first come first serve, so there's no. Um, uh, if you want to attend, not show. Excuse me, not show up. Um, um, so there's not a quorum, but it was 
you know, we got a lot of, a lot of good information. Um, and we're going to do two more. We're going to do one towards the end of this month, maybe some at the beginning of April, and then towards the end of May and beginning of June, getting ready um, in, in, for next year. Um, okay. Thank you. All right. And that is it. That is uh, it for the calendar. Okay. Uh, so for ongoing business, we have none. And for chairperson's notes, um, <laughs> I um, I kind of uh, already said it, and I, I just want to reiterate that um, as our our opportunities arise um, to encourage um, <coughs> our peers um, in different committees. Um, we are going to try and make the effort. I know, again, myself, I'll be looking for the, the mask emails. I know one, I think, just came out today that had some upcoming um, classes that will be informational. I'm not sure if they were virtual because I didn't get in-depth in the details. Um, but we can always you know, bring along our peers and, and look to have some more unity and comprehensive understanding and spending as well. Um, and that was pretty much it. So I am going to move on to uh, other topics for discussion not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Do we have any? Madam Chair. Yes. yes. Um, school, uh, I sure school. did. <laughs> I'm messing up today. I'm sorry, you guys. I promise I can read. Like I said, reading's <laughs> fundamental, but you don't have to fundamentally read. So <laughs> go it's right quick, on ahead. It's a quick one. Um, so we have, we have three updates for you. Um, at our Fall Lash Learns uh, Professional Development, Day. Miss Amy Doyle, who you've met, uh, she's been to a couple of school committee meetings mm -hmm. um, of our middle school. She's a, the middle school technology teacher presented about the use of video games in classrooms. She took the feedback she received and developed into a presentation called Gamification in and out of the classroom. This further developed presentation speaks to the psychology of learning through play and how video games can increase engagement and accessibility in the classroom and the positive impact an esports team can have on a school commu community. Uh, Ms. Doyle has been asked to present at the PAX East 2024 on March 21st at the Boston Convention Center. If you aren't familiar with PAX, it's the largest video game convention on the East Coast and one of the largest in the country. There will be over 750 gaming companies in attendance, as well as a crowd of over 130,000 guests. Ms. Doyle says that she would not have been able to accomplish this without the amazing support of our district and that she is honored to represent the Air Shirley Regional School District in such a major event. It's fantastic. Um, we also want to congratulate um, our Andromeda One High School Robotics team, whose Bilthoven robot uh, made it to playoffs and won the event's most prestigious impact award at the Granite State Competition in Salem, New Hampshire last weekend. The team automatically qualified for the New England Championship competition April 4th through 6th in West Springfield, Massachusetts. They're also hosting um, an event, I believe, this Saturday at the high school, an open house. Yes. Well, that will be on the announcements, so before I say anything wrong, we'll wait until the announcements <laughs> for that. Um, also, uh, I, some parents have reached out to me with some concern with the um, the cost increase in the summer extended day program, um, working with uh, Mrs. Higgins uh, to try to bring that cost down if possible. So we're, we're looking at possibly utilizing some of the extended day grant money that we had received for last year and this year to help bring down that cost if we can. Um, some of the, the, the factors of the cost of our program, um, especially if you compare it to some of the other programs, um, Summer and Shirley for instance, is our transportation contracts, but I think probably what it is, and, and I am making an assumption here, but we are going to try to find out, um, are the salaries. So it, where we have contracts um, with teachers and paraprofessionals and others, um, while a lot of other summer programs and camps are able to hire college students who are coming back on break, and I, I don't know for sure um, that's who works in Summer and Shirley, which is a wonderful program. Um, but we are kind of obligated by contracts uh, to, to pay a certain amount. So we're gonna try to do that right now. Um, that cost is about $18 a day difference uh, per, per child. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get that um, a little bit closer. We will keep the school committee updated uh, as we determine if we can actually reduce that cost for families. But it's something that we will absolutely look at. And I appreciate the families who have reached out. 
Uh, any questions on that? Do you have um, a, a feeling or an idea how many how many uh, kids are we having having that program? And is there an age bracket? Well, it's elementary. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's mostly um, it's sixth mostly grade. kindergarten through through fifth grade. Uh, there are some sixth graders, but there 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 are others in there. I don't. I I believe we had close to forty campers last year. Wouldn't want to guess. Yeah. I think it's more I, than that. Let me let me get that exact number to I mean, you, and I will, so I will include, the whole program. I will include that in the email that I'm sending out about the um, number of students we Thank have you. who, who, who live. I, but, but that that 40 is a guess, so erase that. I'll get you the actual <laughs> number that we had at 10 last year. Don't put that in the middle. Any other questions? Yeah, um, for that program in the past, this was a few summers ago, but they did have college students. Are they having a hard time getting like the high school college students to come back or? Because um, in the past, that was like the majority of the staff, especially for field trip days, yeah. for example. Uh, I'm going to have to look, look into that. Actually, what I can uh, do is have uh, Mrs. Higgins come to one of the future meetings and, mm -hmm. and give you the, the yeah. actual, because if I, I would be guessing at that. But I do believe we still have many of our staff that work during the year that work in that program. I, I could be mistaken, I will check into yeah. that. I think some of them, from my recollection, some yeah. did, some, some didn't, did, some you know, didn't. if they wanted the summer hours. Um, yeah. Some didn't so much want to work all summer, you know, I don't blame well, them, but. I, I can see, I can see um, them wanting to recharge that battery, yeah. uh, certainly. Um, but uh, let, let me get that information and have her, her come and present, uh, present that to you. Thank you. So sure. I'm sorry. Just so we can understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we can bring if we can bring down that cost, we absolutely will. Um, so we have some updated college acceptances. So we have the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. That's cool. Temple University. I don't know if I read Temple before. That's that might be a new one. Stonehill College, University of Massachusetts Boston, Wentworth Institute of Technology, and Worcester Polytech Institute. Super. Well, that is all for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna jump down to communications. I read it, it was communications. I promise I read it. <laughs> you, did we check if there was any other topics for discussion? Yet? I, you that. know what, we swapped on over yeah, to right. the superintendent's no, report. <laughs> um, okay, announcements for March 4th, 2024. On Thursday, March 7th, and Monday, March 11th, uh, office hours for Ms. Erica Spann, school committee chairperson, 6 to 8 p.m., um, location is remote. On Tuesday, March 12th, the Air Shirley PTO meeting at 7 p.m., middle school library. On Wednesday, March 13th, Air Shirley Education Foundation meeting, 7 p.m., high school media center. Thursday, March 14th, 90 minute early release, preschool through 12, late start preschool and professional development for teachers. Lunch will be served, dismissal times for high school, middle school at 12.50 p.m., Laurel A. White, Page Hilltop at 1.45 p.m. On Thursday, March 14th and Monday, March 18th, office hours for Ms. Erica Spann, school committee chairperson, 6 to 8 p.m. remote. On Wednesday, March 20, 90 minute early release, preschool through 12, late start preschool, professional development for, te for teachers, lunch will be served, dismissal times for high school, middle school at 12.50 p.m., Laurel A. White and Page Hilltop at 1.45 p.m. On Thursday, March 21, and Monday, March 25, office hours for Ms. Erica Spann, school committee chairperson, 6 to 8 p.m., remote location. Wednesday, March 27, two hour early release, grades preschool through five for conferences. Lunch will be served. Dismissal time is 1.15 p.m. And Wednesday, March 27, school committee meeting, 6.30 p.m. middle school library. Again, Wednesday, March 27, special education parent advisory council meeting at 6.30 p.m. in the middle school classroom 142. And Thursday, March 28th, two hour early release, grades preschool through five for conferences. Lunch will be served, dismissal time is 1.15 p.m. 
and Thursday, March 28, office hours from Ms. Erica Spann, school committee chairperson, 6 to 8 p.m. remote. Okay. Will we add two announcements? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Andromeda One is one of the, we got the fundraiser information. So there, they have a Chipotle fundraiser at 252 Mill Street in Lemonster. That's this Wednesday, March 6th, from 5 to 9. 25% of the proceeds will go to Andromeda One. And March 9th, this Saturday, there's a community open house here at the high school from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Again, for Andromeda One. We're having Chipotle tomorrow, and I don't have to cook. So I appreciate you, Andromeda <laughs> One. Thank you. <laughs> and the food at the point, I've forgotten the name of the restaurant, that had, that gave the fundraiser. Oh, uh, Anthony's? Anthony, mm -hmm. thank you. Anthony Stonefire mm -hmm. Pizza or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we do not have executive session, so I will. Woo! Yeah. Can I give a, no, just a moment to see the shout out? The, uh, the boys basketball team came from 18 in the playoffs, came from 18 points down in the third period to take a lead with 40 seconds left. And they somebody sank a free corner to give the other team a lead. We had our final look at the basket, we didn't go in, but it probably superior effort on a uh, much higher ranked opponent, really coming back from that showed a lot of grit. The girls won their first playoff game at home that they hosted here against Blackstone Millville. And then uh, if, you're, if you're ever looking, feeling the need to do penance, drive to Cohasset on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> that will certainly fulfill that. But the, uh, they, they met their, their match in Cohasset in the end of the season. It's always, uh, it, no matter when the season ends, it's always something to watch the seniors because for many of the seniors, this is their last mm -hmm. game that they're ever going to play in the sport that they're in. So it's always uh, something to watch and for have, to have both of the teams make the playoffs this year and show that kind of success. It was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you, Jim. Well, then I have to do a shout out for my nephew, <laughs> <laughs> my bad uncle. <laughs> Cole New placed second in all of New England for the indoor 600 awesome. at the track New England's. Awesome. And Cute. the boys track team, um, Cole is participating in the individual 400, but then the four by 400 team is going to be running in nationals this weekend and also the Sprint's uh, middle relay team, boys, are going to be competing in nationals this weekend as well. Is that the market schools? Uh, it's split this year. It's usually, it's been at the New Balance, um, but there's also the College Worlds going on at New Balance. So the first two days are at Reggie Lewis Arena, but then the final two days, I think, are back at the New Balance, the track. What they're for doing in front of uh, right off of the pike, pike. yep, yeah. at the New Balance, yeah, headquarters. Our kids are doing great, and I'm glad to, to hear it. I'm really glad. Um, okay, so I'm going to entertain a motion. I make a motion that we adjourn at 8:25. Yeah. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, meeting adjourned. Five o'clock in the middle.